vehicle, the M8, it's Kissing Cousin, immediately to the right of that, the same vehicle, but with the 37mm fully rotatable uh, turret, Hellcat, which we just talked about, started up, and to the far right, the iconic M4 Sherman tank. So we are looking to assault that bunker way down there in the holler left that great vehicle, combined assault of armor and infantry. Oh, I see it. The drones are in that bunker over there. Oh. The, the gray one. Oh, okay. The bags on the floor. I didn't even notice that. Oh, I want them to fire the, the long tom or everything. All right, let's go! Yeah. All right, so the Sherman just got the order to move out. Sherman's going to provide uh, heavy duty firepower with that 75 millimeter gun we talked about before. That bunker will take a couple of hits, but it will fall to that gun. Moving up now. This type of topography is very, very similar to what you would have seen in the Normandy area, as close as we can make it, so called Bocage country. Up oh, is just a fire from it looks like an anti uh, anti tank gun to the left of the bunker, 37 millimeter gun, Act 40 I think. Sherman's training its gun on that bunker. Oh. All right, that took a toll that 37 millimeter gun. Sounds like that vehicle is shut down. Yeah, that gun is still firing. The Hellcat is moving up to take the Sherman's place to protect it. And the troops are coming up. Hellcat's moving up. That's got that big 76 millimeter gun. Sherman is on fire. You're gonna see the crew will be bailing out. So the enemy vehicles are coming in to cover that crew as they bail out. And they Forwards, they're going to disperse probably behind that Amstonia, be my guess. And that far continue, that far squad, rifle squad, they're disgorging from the uh, half track. They're taking it. There's another 76 millimeter shot. Look at that smoke ring. Yeah, the shell was ejected from a Hellcat. Throwing the wood and thrown overboard mechanically by the ship. Like that flank commit over the troops have penetrated the troop line or the uh, oh. 
like the bunker is in safe hands now. They'll be looking through there for prisoners, survivors, probably papers, documents, maps, anything that might be of further use to intelligence, American intelligence. satellite you can see those 76 millimeter shells going back up into the turret of the Hellcat. You can actually fire a real black powder round through that gun unlike uh, some of our other guns which are propane and oxygen fire. That's why you have that big blast and that big uh, cloud of white smoke. That's exactly what would have happened as the shells were expended they would be thrown in the, the very tight um, turret anyway. The crew would be tossing those shells outside and tossing them out. We're using those shells over and over again. So coming up close to the tree line right now, they're going to make the turn. They're going to parade in front of you guys that are along this side here, the entryway side. These are elements of the 41st Armored Infantry Regiment of the 2nd Armored Division. That's what our Lila friends portray in situations like this. They're wearing a very distinctive camouflage uniform that was worn for a short period of time immediately after D-Day by this unit and a couple of one or two other isolated units. It wasn't a particularly successful experiment. That's exactly what it was, an experiment. Uh, and they rapidly went back to the solid OD, HPT, and boys, full shirts, and the work pants. Mostly transition to that point. Actually, these uniforms were designed to be worn over, believe it or not, the uniform I'm wearing, and they are over the blue shirt and the wool pants. Imagine how hot that is, uh, after wearing wool pants, shirts, around the war, or something like that, in the late 1950s. I don't think they were complaining much during the winter of 
down by the entry. Well, you're ready to join. 